Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm MJ Bishop. I direct the Kerwin Center for Academic Innovation. And as many of you may be aware, the Kerwin Center has been leading the Maryland Open Source Textbook Initiative now for the last several years um, in collaboration with Maryland Online, the Maryland Association of Community Colleges, and now most recently, the Maryland Independent Colleges and Universities. Um, We've been uh, doing what we can to help support faculty adoptions of OER. And um, one of the most exciting additions I think we've had in this last year is the Success Accelerator. Um, this is a, a, the next step, so to speak, in our partnership with Lumen Learning um, that for me at least is really realizing some of the things that I've seen as the great promise of OER. Of course, you know, we've been doing all we can to save our students money and to, um, you know, try to make college more affordable. But among the things that I've thought has been really exciting about this work is the ways in which faculty get opportunities to get uh, to engage each other in conversations about OER adoptions and the things that they're doing differently in their classroom as a result of, of these experiences. So the Success Accelerator is a, a really exciting opportunity to provide a platform for that to, to make it a little more structured and a little more organized beyond just uh, creating groups in uh, the most commons or something along those or, or us creating professional development workshops and you all relying on each other to remember to email each other after the event and those sorts of things. So um, we've invited a few um, Success Accelerator alums uh, to join us today and um, uh, tell, tell you all a little bit about their experiences. And I think, I think you're going to be really um, impressed and excited to hear about what's been going on. So um, Julie, I'll turn it back over to you to work through the introductions. All right. That sounds great. Thank you, MJ. My name is Julie Curtis. I'm with Lumen Learning and I lead our work with Lumen Circles, which is the professional development uh, dimension of what we do. And we've been really excited over this past a uh, few months, August, to be able to introduce a, a great set of, of uh, virtual community of practice experiences as part of Lumen Circles. And so the Success Accelerator that we'll talk about today is uh, one of those experiences that provide some great opportunities to connect with peers and share ideas and explore and, uh, and really do some fun things to learn how to improve learning and, and the supportive experience for your students. Um, so with that, we have three Maryland faculty members who've been part of the Success Accelerator program this fall who consented to join us today. So we're really happy to have them. And so I will have them introduce themselves. I'm just gonna go in the order that I'm seeing them on my Zoom screen. So Julie, you're first. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Manley I'm from Coppin State University. I'm on faculty in the Department of Psychology, Counseling and Behavioral Health. Happy to be here today. Thank you, Julie. And next we have Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie Fries. I teach at Warwick Community College. I've done two classes with OER, a liberal arts math and a pre-calculus. And it's been a great experience. Thank you, Debbie. And then Maria. Hi, everybody. I'm Maria Mani. I teach at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Um, in the area of Spanish, and um, I use the, the Spanish Waymaker. Thank you so much. Uh, one thing I will note is that uh, while we have Julie and Debbie who both use the Waymaker courseware now for a little while, so they, are, they were kind of veterans to the courseware, but new to a success accelerator, um, Maria was one of our brave souls who was new to Waymaker and new to Success Accelerator. And so maybe Maria and some of your comments, you can talk about that experience of being a new courseware user and, and how you felt the Success Accelerator helped, um, helped your path that way. Um, so during our format today, uh, MJ consented to be our facilitator. And so I think we have an opening question. Uh, MJ, if you can, uh, do, do you have the questions in front of you, I hope? <laughs> You're on mute. Am I frozen? Yeah. Uh, uh, so yes, I do have the questions in front of me and I put on my glasses so I can actually read them. Okay, so we have a first question and then we'll do a quick demo kind of a uh, quick guided tour of what Success Accelerator looks like and then we'll jump into jump back into the panel. 
So I'm going to ask each of you in one second set, sentence or less. Um, less, how would you describe the Lumen Circle Success Accelerator program to your colleagues? So who'd like to go first? I'll uh, jump in. Um, All right. I, I don't mind. Um, so I, I, I think the Success Accelerator was probably one of the most beneficial professional development experiences I've completed. All right. It's my one sentence. <laughs> Very good sentence. Thank you. Debbie. When I signed up for it, I thought it would be more training on doing things, but it's not. It was really some thoughtful reflection, connecting what I do day to day with what I want as my outcome. In fact, I ended up doing what I tell my students to do. Think, just think deeply about what you're doing rather than just cover material. Excellent. Thank you, Debbie. Maria, you're up. Uh, for me, it was really a, a sense of community and a brainstorming place. Uh, it was uh, full of good material to read, uh, good comments, uh, and good discussions. So very interactive. Terrific. Thank you. So yeah, Julie, 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 Curtis, let's take a look at the platform. So, cause, cause this is all a little abstract at the moment. Let's take a look at the platform and see um, how it creates the structure that makes what they just described possible. All right. So let's see, I'm uh, sharing my screen and having to jigger a couple of things because of the way the zoom windows uh, cover up all of your, uh, <laughs> cover up the things you want people to see. Let's see, it'll put that over on the side. Um, okay, so uh, just in a nutshell, what is Success Accelerator? So thank you. It's, it's always fun for me to hear how, how faculty members who've been through this experience describe it. Um, it to provide a little bit of context, Success Accelerator, uh, and, and I think Debbie noted this, it's not simply training. So once you choose to use Lumen Courseware, there is a standard training and setup and implementation process that, that we provide for everybody. And then Success Accelerator is really a virtual community where we connect you with peers who are also using uh, the, the same or, or you know, courseware in similar distance. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to connect what you're doing with the courseware to teaching practices that are proven to improve student success. And so um, there is a how-to element of Success Accelerator. I'll show you what that looks like, but it's more gives you an opportunity to explore and say, if I want to do this type of thing to improve my learning environment or to provide more support for my students, how do I use these Lumen courseware tools, whether it's Waymaker or whether it's Ohm, to enrich the learning environment for my students? So uh, let's see. One of the things that we talk about, and sorry, I'm just going to close that. There we go. Um, what that we talk about in the Success Accelerator experience is this idea of evidence-based teaching practices. So evidence-based means it comes out of research that says these are the kinds of things that if you do them, it will improve your student's success. It supports more effective learning. And so as we look at this framework, this is a framework that you have an opportunity to explore as you're going through the Success Accelerator experience. So there are different dimensions of the learning environment and you see those represented here in the bright colors. Um, supportive uh, is an environment that builds uh, connection, a sense of belonging, a sense of trust. It makes us a safe place for students to learn. And so the kinds of things you can do to build a supportive environment according to learning science research are, are teaching strategies that do these things. So you can do things that convey a sense of caring and connection uh, between the faculty member and the students. You can do things that build community that help your students interact with each other and build that sense of belonging together. You can support students through transitions if they're transitioning into college or going through other transitions in their lives. You can create an environment that's inclusive and acknowledges the, the diversity and the different perspectives of the students that are coming into your classroom and making it a safe and supportive space there. And you can do things that are fun and enjoyable. And all of these things, if you're incorporating these elements into your teaching, into your learning activities, 
it can support student success. Um, similarly, if there, is, there are things you can do to create a learning environment that's challenging and motivating in positive ways, you can do things that create more variation to keep learners engaged in different ways, to provide learning opportunities that, um, that acknowledge the, the differing preferences or needs of learners who have different abilities or different, um, different ways of learning. And then um, an organized environment, this is a dimension of a learning environment that provides good structure, um, good organization, uh, and, and uh, helps students really know what are the things that I need to do um, to improve and, and to perform and to, to support my learning as I go through this process. So as part of the, the uh, Success Accelerator experience, you explore this framework of practices. And there are a lot of different ways that you could do these different kinds of things. We're not saying there's only one way to create a supportive environment or one way to create a well-organized environment. But we give you ideas about how to do this using the courseware tools. And we also give you a lot of freedom to kind of explore and figure out what are the things that will work well for you and the way you teach and the way that, uh, that what your students are coming in and, and um, experiencing in the learning process. So um, with the experience, you come into a virtual learning circle. We'll look in just a minute at what, where that happens. It's a website that you log into and you have a, a virtual community there that you interact with. You explore this framework of evidence-based teaching practices and different ways you can use the courseware to apply them. You reflect on your experiences. So this is, this is a, a program that helps make space for you to step back and say, okay, what am I doing? How is it working? What are the choices that I'm making? How is it impacting my students? And being able to use that to help uh, enrich the things that you're doing and your experience as a teacher. And then of course, over the, the course of this, you have the opportunity to reflect and see how is it impacting my students? What are the things, how is it impacting me as a teacher and the choices that I'm making over time? So with that, I'm now going to switch into the, the Lumen Circles website. So this is a website when you are a Success Accelerator faculty fellow, we send you a login and you get to log in. The first time that you come in, there's kind of a wizard process that guides you through setting up a profile and, and you know, some standard things, sharing a little bit of information about yourself. And then after that, when you come in, it actually takes you directly to whatever week it is, whatever part of your accelerator circle is happening at that particular time. And so when you come in on the left-hand side, you get to see your circle members and there are some tools here to connect with them and, and have discussions with them. But your circle members are here. This is a demonstration circle. So everything that you see here is, is a sample, um, not, uh, not exactly real people. The one who has the purple marker is your facilitator. So we have highly trained facilitators who are former educators. Uh, in most cases, they have experience in um, a, a grounding in evidence-based teaching. They have a, a grounding, a strong grounding in the courseware itself and how, how to use the courseware um, to, to deliver, you know, great teaching, or the, these enriched teaching experiences. And, and so they do have that expertise, but they're not here as a teacher. They're actually here as a facilitator. So they can be a resource in that way if they're needed. But really their primary role is to help create connections between the circle members to point you to ideas uh, and, and to people to help enrich that experience and surface the expertise and the perspectives that come together in that circle. So in each other as you're sharing ideas, the facilitator guides you through that process and helps make connections. Um, in, and then each week you have a couple of a couple of things that you're doing. Um, we design this that it takes typically, uh, it, it takes really just uh, two, one to two hours per week. Um, we, we actually did this in the fall. We had an exit survey after our, our uh, success accelerator circles completed, asking how long did it really take you? Um, and we found uh, that for Success Accelerator, for the vast, vast majority of people, it was it was under two. <clears throat> excuse me, it was it was between one and two hours. There were a couple of outliers who said it took longer, a little over two hours. But for most people, it was really in the one to two hour mark. So, what is it you're doing? 
Um, so the first thing that you do is there's a reflection of some sort and I'm going to click, <clears throat> excuse me, into this reflection so you can see what that looks like. This is one that was already submitted, but I've clicked to edit it so you can see what it would look like if you're the fellow coming in and doing this. So the reflection gives you a prompt. So it's it's setting something up. Here's what I want you to think about. And then there's a set of ideas that you can explore. Um, around the supportive classroom environment. So this particular week, we're thinking and exploring what makes a supportive classroom environment. And then you have a set of ideas of these are teaching strategies that align with that evidence-based framework that you can do using the courseware tools to create a more supportive environment. And so this happens to be for Waymaker. Um, for, for the for ohm uh, on the math side, it's actually the same set of ideas, but a set of, of the, the videos, the how-to is geared towards the ohm uh, set of courseware tools as opposed to the Waymaker tools. Um, and so here yeah, is uh, how can you track student progress and reach out to the students who particularly need support. <clears throat> Excuse me, so ways the coursework can help you do that more easily. A second idea is around making it a comfortable, safe space for students to practice, for them to learn, and it's okay to make mistakes. This is an improvement process. So setting that tone, um, which, which creates a more supportive and inclusive environment for your students. Um, and so uh, some, some how-tos on how you would do that with your courseware tools. And then the third idea is around using self-checks in a small group activity for in-class learning activities that that help build community. And I will also say, as we go through these things, a lot of folks are teaching only online right now. And so there are ideas or there are ways to apply things that are that are in you know, the online context as opposed to the face-to-face -face context. So they're, they're, it's applicable across the board. Um, so that after you go through the ideas, then we ask you to reflect. We ask, think about those ideas and pick one or try something else that is uh, doing something that will create a more supportive environment for your student. You can plan for it and actually do it and say, here's how it went. Um, in some cases, we had people say, you know, I can't right now, but here's what I'm going to do. Um, and both of the fine. So we, we just want you to engage and think about what is it you're doing and what are the things that you can do differently using the tools to apply evidence-based practices and support your students. Now, as you can see, there's these little hashtags that show up. Those are actually the, those evidence-based practices. And this becomes a common language that the faculty fellows can use as they're talking about the choices they're making, the things that they're doing, the, the ways that they're engaging students. And so this becomes a really helpful way to share ideas and, and feedback and, and give faculty members the opportunity to, um, you know, to kind of interconnect and cross-pollinate and things that uh, different people have tried or would like to try and, and exploring how they could do that with this set of tools. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back. Uh, so I'm going to close out of this reflection and then just show you, I'm gonna scroll down now. Here's the reflection at the bottom. Once you post that reflection and there's one of these per week, um, then you have the opportunity to provide feedback. You're assigned to provide feedback to two people in your circle. You're welcome to read as many of the reflections as you want to, um, but we try and make sure that everybody over the course of the time has an opportunity to, uh, to reflect or read the reflection and provide feedback to everybody else in the circle. Um, and so that's why we make the assignments that way. Um, but here you see See the way that people will provide feedback, they'll respond, they may ask questions, they may, um, you know, acknowledge or comment on some of the strengths that, um, that, are, that are there in the reflection. And one of the things that we hear a lot of faculty members say are, you know, there are things that I, uh, things that I was doing already and now I know I have a name for them and, uh, you know, in a way to talk about them differently. So this is the kind of dialogue that can be part of this experience. Um, the last thing that I'll share, and then we'll jump back over to our faculty panel, is um, within the platform very that has a variety of different resources in it. The list of these resources is associated with these tags or these evidence-based instructional practices. And so as a faculty fellow, you can come in and explore um, in the library 
definitions around what these practices are to as you as you want to explore them. And then there's also a set of resources associated with each one. And so these are a set of curated, it could be articles or how to videos or uh, examples of tools that you can use. And so um, your, your facilitator may point you to some of these depending on what your goals and, and the areas that you're exploring. Um, they're also in the library or what we call exemplars. So these are essentially case studies that are from other faculty fellows who've been through this experience. And their facilitator has seen what they've done. Um, they've looked at it and said, this is a really great example of this particular teaching practice. And so with permission from the faculty fellow, they've asked if this become an exemplar or a case study for other faculty fellows to reference. And so this can be another rich source of just getting ideas of things that you could do. Um, and so we are, and we're continuing to build those out over time. So it's really see that studies building. So I'm going to stop there and we'll go back to our faculty panel. So let me stop sharing. I think you may be on mute. Once again. Um, <laughs> thanks, Julie. I think that's that's really helpful to put kind of some context um, in, in the comments that our faculty panel have already made and will be making. Um, so uh, I'll let you all just chime in as you feel inspired to do so as I ask the questions, but um, we'll start with how this program impacted what you do as a teacher um, and how you engage students. Who has some thoughts on that? Well, as, as everyone saw, some of the topics were uh, seemed to me at first to be kind of touchy feely, which we don't do a whole lot of in math, you know, the answer is two and then you go on. But uh, going- well, How do you feel about that answer, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, going through those uh, topics of caring and transition to college, it again, really made me think from a student's perspective, how the courses would look. So it just helped me be a real person instead of just a covering the material. And I enjoyed that. And I'd like to sign up again because with a different group, the course could be so different. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it also helped in particular with the challenges you were facing and your students were facing during the pandemic? I think so. I really think so. It made me more aware of their mm -hmm. feelings mm -hmm. without being mushy. Don't right. want to be mushy. No, no, no math person yeah. wants to be mushy. No. <laughs> Maria or Julie, what are some of your thoughts on that? So I'll say um, initially, I was I was intrigued by the the title of of the development, the virtual learning circle and community of practice. I thought that this would be a really great opportunity to kind of enhance what I was already doing in my classroom, and also give me an opportunity to learn from my peers who may have been doing similar things, although perhaps with different subject matter. Uh, we implemented uh, Lumen Waymaker back in the spring of 2018. So we felt fairly comfortable with what we were doing and how we were navigating through the course, even when we had to make the immediate switch to virtual learning. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, look at our course and see how we could make it even better during su such uncertain times. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just gave me a chance to reflect on what I was doing and explore these tools that could really you know, make the course better. And I really liked that we as a community were learning together. Um, you know, peers would say, okay, this worked really well. Maybe you could consider working this tool into your course. So I, I realized, and you know, it's good to have that reminder that you know, just like our students, we learn best when we're actually doing and we're actually actively engaged. So it was, it was a great use of my time. Yeah, I know I always found that to be true, you know, as you're trying to learn a new software tool or whatever, just me reading through the manual doesn't cut it, right? You need a project, you need, you need, it needs to be done in context. Maria, did you have any thoughts you wanted to add to this? Yeah, well, I agree with, with both uh, comments and the fact that it was such a special time to to 
launch something new and I, I was really starting for the first time uh, using the Waymaker and first time uh, participating in a community like that. And it gave me some sense of safety. It was like a safety net um, because it was a space for me to say, well, I tried this this week and it worked or I, I'm not sure if I, I will dare to do this. And uh, even though, or, or perhaps even better because it was interdisciplinary, um, there were some really great ideas and, and good discussions about why are you afraid of doing that? And mm -hmm. how is your environment different than mine? Or how, how can I tweak the activity that you did in a face-to-face -face or hybrid environment and do it online? So mm -hmm. there, there was a lot of um, honest discussion. We were not trying to show off like, I'm the perfect, you know, use all the hashtags or things like that. The hashtag thing, it was interesting because at the beginning I was, I couldn't do it. I was like, how am I supposed to tag everything I say or do? Uh, but it was a good practice. Even when people hashtag what you said, because what Julie was saying, it made me aware of what I was doing and maybe I was not naming it or labeling uh, in the right way or, or was yeah. not aware. And now you're able to communicate with all of the 18 year olds in your life, right? On social media too. <laughs> um, well, so, you know, they say an interviewer is not, I'm sorry, go ahead, Julie. I was just gonna say just something that uh, Maria just spoke about. So, and also what Julie touched on um, when she was going over what the actual success accelerator looks like by touching on the creating the supportive classroom. You know, it's so interesting because one of my, so every, every week you do your reflection and you can do it the traditional way where you're typing out or you can um, do a recording. So going into this, I was terrified of doing a recording. And I said to myself, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with what I know. But it really was such a safe space where I could try new things that I actually did a recording in week three. And I was so tickled with myself. And so it prompted me, I know I have students in my class who you know, are there and they're like, oh, I'm never gonna ask a question or I'm never gonna do this. So it really made me go back and think in my course, how can I be sure that I am creating this safe, supportive classroom so that my students feel comfortable taking a risk just like I felt comfortable in the success mm -hmm. experience. That's really great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so they tell you as an interviewer, you're, you're not supposed to ask questions you don't know the answer to. But Maria, I am going to go off script here for one second and ask you as the, the person on the panel who both adopted and uh, engaged with the Success Accelerator in a very difficult semester uh, to have done all of that. Um, how did you find the load to be and would you do it differently next time around? And you may be completely honest here because I think we may have some people that joined us today who are, have not yet adopted um, one of the Waymaker or own products. So, um, you know, and are, are, are curious because one of the messages that we sent out was, hey, if you've been, if you've been thinking about doing this but wondering where the heck am I going to get the support um, that I need in order to feel like I can be successful? Um, this may be a solution. So how would you respond to that, Maria? Well, the timing seemed contradictory, you know, because it was a very busy time, a very difficult time. But I, I did really uh, feel grateful that I was uh, having that space, like I said before. And I was surprised because at the beginning I was like, oh, why did I sign up for this? When mm -hmm. am I going to find the time? <laughs> Will but, MJ let me out of it if I email her? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I was looking forward to, to see, you know, what people would comment, uh, to share what I, I because it, again, I, I found this space to uh, bounce ideas and to, to be honest about the experience and, and to get that sense of community that somehow we lost by not being mm. uh, in the campus. Right. You can't walk down the hall and ask a question of one of your exactly. colleagues. Exactly. Right? That was yeah. that, that moment that, and the way it's, it's structured, I really felt, um, I wish I could replicate that with the students. 
because it nudges you. It's like, hey, somebody commented on, on you. Uh, right. you know, uh, do you want to uh, reply to so-and-so that already posted? So the way the course itself is uh, connecting you, it's not just a platform that you have to um, remember to log into. It calls you. <laughs> Right. It calls you and it gets your attention and it's it's a perfect timing mm -hmm. because it's that moment when you're planning the next week and you need that conversation. So that, that was um, something that I, I thought was going to be difficult was big support. Terrific. Thank you for that, Maria. Um, we are uh, happy to have the panel address questions from those who are attending the session. So as you're thinking about questions, go ahead and type them in the, in the chat. Um, and while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and ask um, one or two more here that I have on my list. Um, so um, let's come back to you, Debbie. What do you think is the most valuable thing you took away from this experience in terms of your own professional growth? I really enjoyed the, um, the articles at the end of each prompt. There was a meta analysis of many different articles. And I'll tell you, I probably was one of those outliers that took more time because I would enjoy going from one article to the next article to the next article to find ideas. That was very enjoyable for me. That's great. And they were all in one place. Nice. Convenient, yeah, already mm -hmm. curated for you as well. Mm -hmm. Julie, did you have a, a response to that question? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> you would think by now I would learn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, well, two, twofold. I enjoyed seeing directly how or, or which evidence-based practices I was already implementing in my course that I wasn't even really aware of, or I wasn't really paying attention to. And then the second piece I really liked was that collaboration. Um, I was able to learn from others, even if they were, you know, teaching math or teaching anatomy, how teachers were still engaging their students to collaborate in this virtual space. Yeah. That was, that was really important that I, you know, continue that. So that was really helpful for me. Terrific. Maria? Yeah, and in fact, you know, like Debbie, I, I found that I was spending way more time than I had to. Uh, I, I wanted to read other people's comments that I wasn't assigned to comment to uh, because I was curious. I, I started identifying, uh, you know, lines of thought. So I was curious about how this person solved these problems. So I was looking for that specific person. Um, and, and there's so much material that I was really relieved when I knew I was going to be able to go back because there's a lot of uh, papers and, and lessons and just uh, evidence-based uh, curated material that it's, it's so handy to, to be able to resort to when you need something. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, so what surprised you all about this? I think we've heard a little bit from some of you already on this question. It didn't end up being as time consuming as you thought, or at least it dovetailed nicely in terms of the time you were already committing to things. But what were some other things that, that surprised you? I thought it was going to be training. I thought it was going to be click here and then here's the worksheet and here's where you found the PowerPoint. So to have this depth of um, collaboration was so pleasant and surprising to me. Debbie, is there an example of something that you did differently? Um, what kind of a specific example based on uh, some of the, the interaction that you had? Yeah, my icebreakers on the first day of class. Squishy stuff, or mushy <laughs> yeah. stuff, that's what you said. Like mushy, yes. <laughs> had you yeah. done icebreakers previously or did you just approach them differently? Um, I was staunch, here is the syllabus. Mm. Let's calculate your average if you have this test and this quiz and this final exam. I was staunch on that, but I went soft 
and it, mm -hmm. it paid off. I really enjoyed the students more this semester because I could relate to them more. I remembered their icebreakers and could ask them about their kid or ask them about their job in the semester. Mm -hmm. It was very pleasant. And more rewarding, it sounds like, for you as well. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. It really was. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to a colleague who's trying to decide whether or not to do this? I would say that it's doable. I mean, it, it is completely doable. I mean, we all have, you know, an hour a week, an hour to two that we can commit to improving the, the content of the courses that we're providing to our students. And the beauty is at the conclusion of the Success Accelerator, the product that you have is this really enhanced course. You know, it's not that standalone piece. It's your actual course that you've actively been working in and trying and experimenting things with, or even just kind of noting what you want to try for an, another semester. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. And it's reassuring in times when <clears throat> much uncertainty and, and you need to check with colleagues and, and brainstorm and say, am I doing the right thing? Especially when we were really innovating because we all had to. Um, so being sure that the, the changes, the adaptations we were doing made sense um, and talk about it with colleagues from all different fields. That was, for me, was energizing. Instead of, instead of draining, uh, it, it I don't know, comes in Spanish to me, but it, it gave me energy. Say to us in Spanish. <laughs> puso las pilas, I was going to say, but. Ah, puso las pilas. Me puso las pilas. Yes, what she said. <laughs> um, so was there, were there disadvantages? I, I know you guys were all probably in groups that were a mix of disciplines and so forth. Um, were, there, were, there any, were there any advantages and or disadvantages? What are the pros or cons of that? Uh, and I'm curious also just from a standpoint of the offerings that we're making, you know, would it be more helpful if we were able to get enough people involved at, at one time to make, you know, a, uh, you know, humanities group and a mathematics group and a, I always hate to use the word hard sciences group, but you know what I'm saying. Um, or, or was there some benefit in there being a mix of disciplines in your circles? I think you could go either way. The only disadvantage that I saw was that I think maybe some of the people in my group were overwhelmed and I heard from them the first week and then I didn't hear from them the other four weeks. So I don't know quite what happened to them. Mm -hmm. And I was looking forward to hearing from them. Um, and I liked the mix and we did have several math, but it, it was interesting to also see the um, other soft sciences. Other thoughts on that one? I liked the mix as well. I thought it was intriguing just to hear what other disciplines were doing. And sometimes um, if, if another instructor would recommend like a particular tool that they would use, let's say to work for, for group work or collaboration, you know, it, it might work really well for psychology, but it may not really work for biology. I mean, I, you know, it was just, it was interesting. It was interesting just to hear different voices. Mm -hmm. so I liked it. I, I would advocate for continuing to keep it um, mm -hmm. a mixed group. Great. And I agree. I think it's it's a good thing to have a mix of, of realities and needs. And somehow you track different conversations because there's this overall, you know, quality of engagement with students that, that you know, pans over uh, any any subject matter and then there are some specific discussions that you might I, I went fetch that Spanish teacher that was going to use the same material so mm -hmm. you know uh, I like to have both opportunities to see what it's a more universal you know inclusive engaging quality delivery of, of, of a course and what are very specific strategies for your for your field. Great. 
So I know you, there's, there's 12 other people out there, 13 it looks like now, attendees. Um, please, if you do have any questions, um, go ahead and, and throw them into the chat and we'll make sure um, that we get your questions answered. Um, but I'll continue because they've given me quite a list. So I'm happy to, to keep the conversation going here. Um, um, so, so I guess a sort of similar question would be with respect to the um, levels of experience across the folks that were in your circle. Um, you know, did, did you feel like um, it made sense to have a mix of, of folks in terms of their experience? To be honest, I didn't pay much attention to, I didn't notice that as much. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, there were good strategies, new strategies. I didn't feel that, oh, I, I identified this as an inexperienced teacher or this as a very experienced teacher. We were experienced or inexperienced in different, uh, different elements of what we were doing. Great. I do want to emphasize, at least with respect to the Success Accelerator, they, these are specific um, to Waymaker and Ohm adoptions, um, but it may be worth at least mentioning very quickly, Julie, um, uh, since we're not being overwhelmed with questions, a little bit about the other Lumen Circles and the fact that we have some other things that are a little more flexible in terms of what you're actually teaching with in your classes. Just to speak um, broadly, and then I actually have a slide that I'd love to, to share to, um, to provide a little bit more information. So Lumen Circles has the Success Accelerator program, and um, it's a six-week program that has that focus on using the courseware to explore evidence-based teaching practices. We also offer a set of programs that we call Lumen Circles Fellowships that um, cover a variety of different topics that are for the most part independent of what courseware you might be using. So we have, um, uh, these are nine week fellowships that follow a similar kind of uh, cadence where you're reflecting, you're exploring frameworks and, and applying things that are practices associated with the areas that you want to grow. Um, so we have circles with a theme in online teaching. We have some that focus on learning. We actually have a number of Maryland fellows in circles focused on teaching with OER and open pedagogy. Um, and later in the spring, we'll be introducing uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion as another one of those themes. Um, so in these circles, you're gonna be with faculty who are from a variety of different institutions. And, uh, and are also kind of electing to go through a performance experience as a community of practice with other fellows who are interested in that theme. So that theme of online teaching or OER and Okoji or what have you. Um, and, and so with that, um, even if you're not using the, the Lumen courseware this term, there is a Lumen Circles uh, uh, you know, opportunities, I guess, to grow professionally if methodology sounds like it's interesting, that could definitely apply to, to what you're doing. Um, what I want is a, just a couple of more things on uh, sort of this with Success Accelerator. Um, so Success Accelerator, the program that we've been talking about is a six week experience. And so the first week is kind of an orientating your bearings. Um, and the, the middle week or exploring the frameworks and the different ideas and then there's kind of a conclusion week at the end um, but so, so that you can see the the whole thing is pretty compact um, but at a time when you're able to kind of test out and try things and and go through this experience uh, and, and as you're actively teaching and feedback from your peers um, the other thing about success accelerator is actually a two-term program you go through the first term and it's that six week experience that focuses very much on the courseware and evidence based practice. Then during the second term, you actually have a choice. So you can choose to continue and to do that same type of six week courseware of um, experience with a different circle. So you get to mix and match uh, with with other people that are using the courseware or for your second term, you can opt into one of the nine fellowships. 
Um, and and uh, depending on you know how the program is being funded, we we have different options available. Um, so so you be able to to choose the the focus of that fellowship program. Um, and be able to go, you know, more deeply in those other areas that you want to learn. Um, and in those areas, for all of those, of course, you can continue to explore with, with the same courses that are using Lumen Courseware, doing it with faculty members who are coming in and, and using a variety of different, um, different software tools. So it wouldn't be necessarily same courseware focused intensive thing, but you start to explore those practices and continue, you know, sharing ideas and finding ways with whatever set of tools you're using to apply those practices. So, um, so with that, that a little bit more information on, you know, is this thing, how long does it last? And again, for both of these different types of programs, the six week or the nine week, um, we keep your, your weekly commitment is really designed to be just one to two. And so, um, we know that can feel like a lot in the middle of a busy term, but I liked how Julie said, you know, every find at least that hour. Um, and we do, we have a really supportive facilitators who, you know, will kind of coach you and guide you. In some weeks you just kind of put into it what you can put into it and then keep moving. That's okay too. The main part is to, to, you know, find the ways where it's productive and where it's helpful to with that community. All right. I'm not sure if we come up. Um, I did put the uh, the applicant link into the chat and so if anybody would like to apply but haven't yet um, feel free to find that in the chat. Terrific thanks Julie. So uh, we haven't had any additional questions um, so maybe to, to wrap some wrap this up um, I'll give our panelists one last chance to, to chime in with any additional thoughts they have comments things they'd like to add about their experience or what they'd like to, to communicate to other faculty that are thinking about doing this. Well, I appreciated the time. I did appreciate our facilitator too. I think that was Giselle Miller. Uh, she was great uh, with her responses and her encouragement. And I think I'm going to sign up again. Yay. All right. There's one. I signed <laughs> up already. Uh, I, oh, all I, right. I, so I have to double check because um, I'm, I'm very interested you you propose so many interesting uh, themes and especially the, the adding of, of the inclusion inclusion and diversity theme and so it's hard to choose I don't I don't even remember which one I chose um, but definitely is is again a, a support so I'm always looking for that and the more the better and the facilitator, like Debbie said, um, it's it's not only just one more in the community. It's 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 really doing uh, an awesome job finding connections that you might miss between what people said, and so it helps you a lot um, to not miss on on what's going on. Thank you, Maria. The final piece I would say and. It, it pertains to Success Accelerator, but it also pertains to Lumen um, as a whole. The support that you receive is just outstanding. I never feel like I'm just out there alone and I have to figure it out. It's really, you know, it's really reassuring that, that I have someone who's going to help me or at least guide me to where I can, you know, resolve my issue or get my question answered. So for anyone who's, you know, still considering whether or not to implement or adopt Waymaker or OWN, I would say, you know, also consider the level of support that you would receive as well. Terrific. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, we appreciate everybody's time. I don't see any additional questions in the chat. So I think we must have been incredibly thorough in our coverage of all the topics. And, um, but of course, if anybody does have additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for your time.